You seem like a really nice person, and I, I don't want to offend you. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 hated actors. Catherine, what's the good news? You're driving me to Phoenix! <laughs> for this list, we'll be looking at the most deplorable actors based on their poor performance skills and despicable on-screen personas. And while we may discuss their professional reputations within the industry, we will not be factoring in criminal activity. Do you actually enjoy any of these performers? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Jared Leto. Now, don't get us wrong, Jared Leto has done some great stuff. That Academy Award for Dallas Buyers Club didn't win itself. I suppose I should thank you for wearing men's clothes, not embarrassing me. Are you ashamed of me? Because I hadn't realized that. But at the same time, he remains a bit of a laughing stock. Leto has made some baffling career decisions in recent years, like doing his best Mario impression for House of Gucci. He's also batting zero for two in the superhero business, with his performances completely derailing both Suicide Squad and Morbius. In fact, the latter film was one of the most memed things of the early decade and was widely hated, even earning Leto a Razzie to go with his Oscar. Leto is an interesting guy, and he has had a very interesting career. I was born with a gift. I'm an artist. Number 19, Tom Green. But the salmon can only say. If there's one name that takes us right back to the late 90s and early 2000s, it's Tom Green. He was the MC of the Tom Green Show, which proved a huge influence on the later pop culture cornerstones like Jackass. But his movie choices have been, shall we say, a little spotty. Green is the recipient of numerous Stinkers Bad Movie Awards, winning for Road Trip, Charlie's Angels, and Stealing Harvard. Oh, and also one little movie we forgot to mention, it's called Freddy Got Fingered, and it's generally regarded as one of the worst films ever made. Green had a penchant for shock and gross out humor, but even in its heyday, that particular brand proved incredibly divisive. What in the name of sweet breakfast meats are you doing? For your information, this is me being creative. Number 18, Jason Biggs. I, I heard that you got a little bit of grief because of the uh, He's Bachelorette. He's always getting in trouble. Uh, I'm always getting He's in trouble. Always in what trouble. is it today? Yeah. If you just stick to American Pie, you may grow to love Jason Biggs. The problem starts when you venture into his other works and take a quick glance at his Twitter page. Many people hated his character in Orange is the New Black, and while it gave Biggs some welcome post-American Pie acting work, it didn't do much to bolster his reputation. This reputation began earlier in the decade when Biggs made a number of questionable jokes on Twitter. The targets ranged from inappropriate sexual quips to mocking the death of Bachelorette contestant Eric Hill. There's also the whole Malaysian Flight 17 fiasco, which saw Biggs making a joke after the plane crashed and receiving a number of death threats in response. There's no room. Apparently my head's already up there. I'm sorry. It's okay. Number 17, Kevin James. The career of Kevin James started off well, with his sitcom The King of Queens earning positive reviews, not to mention an Emmy nomination for its lead actor. No, no, you shut up! Doug. What? He's making fun of my shorts again. <laughs> He's five. Be the bigger man. The problem occurs whenever he gets near his good buddy Adam Sandler. Sandler and his Happy Madison productions have undoubtedly brought James fame and fortune, but it has come at the expense of his reputation. Films like Paul Blart Mall Cop, I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry, and Grown Ups are widely reviled, and James is a lead in all three. As of 2023, James has received seven Razzie nominations, two of which are shared with Sandler. Hey, did you really land on that bird, man? Um, I'm not sure. I, I did hear a chirp and then a crunch like noise but that could have been anything number 16 ashton kutcher tom you're acting like a crazy person maybe it's because i just got hit in the head with the 10 pound ashtray by all accounts ashton kutcher is a great guy he's happily married to mila kunis and the couple live in a sustainable farmhouse with their two children he's also a successful venture capitalist investing in the likes of skype and airbnb it's just as darn movies Kutcher has received a number of Razzie nominations for a slew of crappy films, including Just Married, My Boss's Daughter, and Valentine's Day. The latter actually won him the Worst Actor Award alongside his 2010 film Killers. Ever heard of it? Exactly. Let's just say he makes way better investing choices than he does acting. I depend on her, sir. It's not the other way around. So, with your blessing, I'm going to marry her. Number 15, Leah Michelle. 
Mr. Schuster, do you have any idea how ridiculous it is to give the lead solo and sit down and rock on the boat to a boy in a wheelchair? There's no denying that Leah Michelle is talented. She's an Emmy-nominated actress and was singing on Broadway before her age reached double digits. Really, her reputation didn't crumble until 2020, when actress Samantha Marie Ware accused Michelle of treating her poorly on the set of Glee. Some of Michelle's other co-workers came to Ware's defense and accused Michelle of being difficult to work with. Aside from being generally rude to others, they also accused her of being a diva. In other words, the often haughty and arrogant character of Rachel Berry doesn't sound that far off from Michelle herself. You get great grades. You're a fantastic singer. Everybody hates me. Number 14, Charlie Sheen. Drugs. Thank you, no, I'm straight. Few actors are as difficult to digest as Charlie Sheen. Many people love his on-screen work, and he has remained a staple in movies and television for decades. But there are some major and undeniable problems. Sheen's private life has often been the source of much contention, with much of the problems stemming from drugs and alcohol. And while he has always been a controversial figure, people really grew worried about Sheen following his termination from Two and a Half Men. Not only were the reasons for his firing problematic, but his subsequent behavior made him the subject of critical headlines and ironic internet memes. Sheen was doing many things, but winning was not one of them. I'm by winning. I win here and I win there. Now what? Number 13, Russell Brand. I, I don't know, I wouldn't say Hitler, but certainly Goebbels. It was like a little holiday with Hitler. You could say that many people don't like Russell Brand's brand. His fast-talking, smart-alecky shtick can certainly be grating, and he plays this character in pretty much every single movie that he's in. If you didn't like Russell Brand in Forgetting Sarah Marshall, chances are you don't like him in anything else either. His personal life has also garnered much negative attention, whether from his known promiscuity or the annoying look-at-me behavior that he often conducts in public. Finally, Brand's controversial COVID views made him a public enemy, like the time he actively encouraged his fans to ignore safety measures. Lesbian Simon and Garfunkel, 61st and Park. Look. Number 12, John Travolta. They call it the Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. What do they call it, Big Mac? Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it the Big Mac. When it comes to Hollywood stock, few have fallen as far as John Travolta. Travolta was one of the biggest names in the industry back in the day, but unfortunately, he is no longer taken very seriously. In fact, many people actively hate him. His work throughout the last two decades has been mostly atrocious, and he has earned razzy nominations for the likes of Battlefield Earth, The Fanatic, and the widely maligned Gotti. We don't know what happened, but this isn't the John Travolta that the world grew to love. I get closure. Closure. I mean... Make sure I heard that straight. Closure. Number 11, Jamie Kennedy. When it comes to the filmography of Jamie Kennedy, Scream is a notable outlier. And number three, never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back! His performance as movie nerd Randy Meeks is widely acclaimed, and his character is easily one of the most popular of the long-running franchise. And then there's everything else. Kennedy was in some real stinkers throughout the 2000s. There was Malibu's Most Wanted, which saw the actor speaking in an unfortunate dialect and mirroring both the fashion and personality of early Eminem. There was also Son of the Mask, which earned Kennedy a Razzie nomination for Worst Actor. The less said about that disaster, the better. And let's not forget First Night 2013 with Jamie Kennedy, which brought the actor much criticism for being the shoddiest New Year's special ever broadcast. God bless you, and we'll see you in 2024. Good night! Bye! There's a fight. It's ending with a fight. Number 10, Tyler Perry. Okay, okay, okay now have you ever done sales before? Yes, I sold uh, trees. Oh, Christmas trees? When you smoke them, they make you feel like it's Christmas. <laughs> this actor is personally worth over $1 billion, so he's obviously doing something right. And even though that something right is crafting a media empire, said media is not very good. In fact, it's often downright offensive. Perry has appeared in a wide variety of films and television shows, but he's most known for playing Medea in her eponymous movies. The Medea films are almost universally derided, and Perry has received dozens of Razzie nominations for his writing, acting, and directing. He has also been accused of stereotyping black females, most prominently by longtime critic Spike Lee, who has even compared the Medea films to minstrel shows. Please, it, it was $37.95 is what I sent to you to help put that boy through school. What's she gonna do with $37? It ain't about where it come from, 
is what you had to do to get it. Number nine, Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow's lifestyle company has agreed to pay a six-figure settlement for false advertising. Unlike many celebrities on this list, Gwyneth Paltrow isn't really hated for her movie choices. She's in a good variety of films, ranging from period rom-coms to blockbusters. She's a very good actress, and none of her characters are particularly deplorable. Nope, this one comes all in the personal life. Of course, there's Goop, with ridiculous and borderline dangerous health products like Jade Eggs, Body Vibes, and Coffee Enemas. The company has made Paltrow a national laughingstock. She's also a vocal pusher of pseudoscience, with her cookbooks, anti-GMO stance, and bizarre lifestyle choices drawing criticism from health experts. Basically, don't listen to a thing Paltrow has to say about food or health. Just enjoy her movies. You must be the famous Pepper Potts. Indeed I am. Number 8. Steven Seagal. What does it take to change the essence of a man? This man knows a thing or two about martial arts, but not about movies. Or, for that matter, being a good person. Seagal has been in a number of terrible films, including On Deadly Ground, Fire Down Below, and Half Past Dead, all of which resulted in Razzie nominations for Worst Actor. He's even a sore spot in otherwise decent action flicks, like Stuart Baird's Executive Decision. There's also the fact that Seagal is a bit of a jerk. He has been long accused of inappropriate behavior towards women, and many stuntmen have called out Seagull for being unprofessional and needlessly violent. It sounds like no one much likes him, not those working on his movies, and not the people watching them. Help! We're not gonna make it! You are... Number 7. Roseanne Barr In the 15 years we've been married, has there ever been one morning where there wasn't any coffee? No. <laughs> You have to ask me every morning if there's coffee. For a long time there, Roseanne Barr was the voice of a generation. Her sitcom was unlike anything else on TV, earning heaps of acclaim and winning its lead actress an Emmy. If she had just stopped there, Barr would have gone down in the annals of TV legends. But she didn't stop there. Barr has been a hotspot of controversy throughout the late 2000s and early 2010s. Whether it's posting as Hitler in a Jewish magazine, spreading fake news, or tweeting out baseless conspiracy theories, there's also the racist tweet that Barr made against politician Valerie Jarrett that got the Roseanne reboot canceled. This is a strong case of never meet your heroes. Because, you know, I was kind of not allowed to even apologize for what happened. I, I was just like blackballed and, uh, you know, uh, just, just totally canceled. Number six, Andy Dick. Uh, Andy, don't please, don't. <laughs> Don't touch Ivanka. It'd be easy to make a joke about this actor's name, but we're not going to. Suffice it to say, it's pretty accurate. For as long as he's been around, Andy Dick has been a thorn in the side of Hollywood. Even without going into his countless arrests, Dick has continuously performed in inappropriate manners and has made numerous enemies across the industry. He has been fired from projects, kicked out of award shows, literally dragged off stages, and even punched by random strangers. He also has a long-standing feud with comedian John Lovitz, as Lovett blames Dick for the death of Phil Hartman. As you can see on this security video, a man appears to be waiting for Dick, then lands a vicious blind punch that knocks the comedian out cold. Number 5. Amy Schumer We're going to majorly pivot here for Amy Schumer. Unlike the last couple of entries, Schumer is not a bad or disagreeable person, and she has never been the subject of any career-ending controversy, but people just do not like her. I want that. I want that hatred. Most of the hate stems from Schumer's brand of comedy, as she loves to utilize gross-out, weirdly personal sexual humor in her stand-up. To many, the jokes that Schumer tells are not funny at best, disgusting and inappropriate at worst. To make matters even worse, Schumer has been accused of stealing jokes on numerous occasions, which is perhaps the biggest no-no you can make in the comedy business. Comedian Amy Schumer isn't laughing this morning over those accusations that she stole jokes. Now, the Trainwreck star is strongly denying the charges, and ABC's David Wright has the story. Number 4. Rob Schneider this comedian enjoyed great success on Saturday Night Live back in the late 80s and early 90s, but like Kevin James, his reputation took a major hit once he started collaborating with Adam Sandler. His work with Sandler's Happy Madison has been widely criticized, from The Hot Chick to The Benchwarmers and the two Deuce Bigelow films. The second, 2005's Deuce Bigelow European Gigolo, even earned Schneider a Razzie Award for Worst Actor. He has also garnered much criticism for being an outspoken anti-vaxxer, believing that childhood vaccinations are toxic, that they are not scientifically effective, and that they can cause autism. It's not a great look for an actor whose standing is already in the toilet. Wow, that was a brutal comeback. Let's go, guys. I don't think I'll ever recover from that. Man. Number three. Pauly Shore. The movies, the, watching the movies make me sad because I miss starring in films. 
So what happened? Like, why did that dry up? This name is the very definition of throwback. Pauly Shore was kind of like the Rob Schneider of his day, starring in low-effort, crude, and wildly unfunny comedies that appealed to few. His heyday occurred throughout the 90s, starring in some abhorrent comedies like Encino Man, Jury Duty, and Biodome. With his whiny surfer bro voice and complete lack of comedic talent, Shore soon found himself with few fans and many detractors. The Razzies have even recognized Shore with some special nominations, including Worst New Star of the 90s and Worst Actor of the Century. So, you know, that can't feel too good. Welcome to Biodome! Welcome to the future! Number 2. Chevy Chase. The next time you have one of your outbursts, I'd appreciate it if you'd have some consideration for your kids. The man is a comedic legend, there's no denying that. From Saturday Night Live and Community to all time comedy movies like Caddyshack and Vacation, Chevy Chase had the career that dreams are made of, but by all accounts, absolutely everybody hates him. Many people on the set of SNL did not get along with Chase, including Bill Murray, who at one point got into a fistfight with Chase after Chase made fun of his looks. Many filmmakers have also spoken negatively about their time with Chase, including directors Joe and Anthony Russo and community creator Dan Harmon. In fact, Chase became so difficult to work with that he left Community in the middle of its fourth season. All right, you already know Brittles. Britta. Uh, Abed, Abed the Arab. <laughs> Is that inappropriate? Sure. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. James Corden When the presenters are up here and when the recipients are receiving their awards, don't stand at the back of the stage with your hands in your pockets. While widely known for his talk show, James Corden is also a prominent actor, having found success in both his native Britain and the United States. Unfortunately, it seems like neither side of the Atlantic enjoys his company. While he puts on a nice guy veneer, many people in the industry have spoken negatively about Corden. Just ask Patrick Stewart, who got into a very awkward fight with the comedian at the Glamour Awards. By all accounts, he's an incredibly rude person behind the scenes, often acting discourteous to staff and openly disrespectful of others' work. But it also extends beyond the Hollywood sphere. In 2022, Corden was banned from a restaurant called Balthazar after acting in an abusive manner towards the staff. As some of you may have seen, uh, last week there were, there, was, there were stories about me being banned from a restaurant. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.